as we've discussed, the United States taking action against Russia by banning transaction with the Russian Central Bank and the country's wealth fund, this all coming as the United States and the European Union work on a list of banks to cut off from that swift messaging network. Obviously, unplugging an entire nation from the world's financial network would be pretty significant. Uh, let's bring in Gerard Cassidy, RBC Capital, Manage uh, Capital Markets Managing Director and Head of U.S. Bank Equity Strategy. Gerard, it's great to have you on this morning. Uh, you know, Citigroup disclosing $5.4 billion in exposure to the Russian economy. How impactful are all of these measures going to be on the U.S. bank stocks, which are having a rough morning, by the way, this Monday? No, no, they are. They certainly are having difficulty uh, this morning. Uh, there's clearly a risk off approach to the markets today. And the banks um, in these types of environments um, have rough days. In terms of the actual exposure to the U.S. banks, on what's going on over in Russia. The exposure is minimal. Uh, you mentioned Citigroup's over $5 billion number, uh, which in nominal dollars appears to be large, but as a percentage of their um, balance sheet, it's about 3%, very manageable. So what we're seeing here, of course, is the risk off trade with the banks. The 10-year government bond yield has fallen. So that's another factor. The yield curve is flattening. And there's also a question Will the Federal Reserve be as hawkish on raising short-term interest rates this year to fight inflation in view of what's going on over in Russia and Ukraine? So, Gerard, it sounds like, I mean, the Fed still remains the big story for these banks. That makes sense, given the importance of the yield curve for their business models. But, I mean, just to kind of stay on the topic here, over the weekend, you were hearing a lot of people comparing the financial uh, implications of what's happening in Russia to perhaps a, a Lehman moment. And it is indeed the case that these Russian banks could be at risk of full on collapsing here. So uh, even irrespective of the direct exposure that the U.S. banks have to the Russian economy, is there a worry that perhaps a global financial uh, issue could be cropping up here? You never say never, of course, but it's not likely um, the global financial Conditions are much, much stronger today than they were pre-Lehman. As you know, particularly here in the United States, our American banking system has over two times the amount of capital and liquidity built into the system following the financial crisis due to the Dodd-Frank legislation. In addition to that, they are stress tested every year for very draconian scenarios. Now, granted, I, there wasn't a war breaking out or a conflict breaking out as part of the, those draconian scenarios, but they do have counterparty risk scenarios that are very significant, particularly for our global banks. So when you look around the world, there's plenty of liquidity. There is less leverage, which is critical, which was the major problem with the Lehman crisis because it spread so quickly and there was a leverage problem. So I don't, don't see it at this point being anywhere close to what happened when Lehman collapsed and brought down you know, the global financial system because of the precautions that have been put in, safety measures that have been put in post-financial crisis. Well, Gerard, what, what bank are you most concerned about uh, in terms of future profits this year, given its exposures to, to various overseas economies? I would say that if there is a concern about profits, and again, as you guys touched upon, the real driver of profits for the banking industry for our global players, as well as our regional banks, is the outlook for the short end of the yield curve. If the Federal Reserve raises rates three to four times this year, which is our expectation, the profitability of that will be very impressive for the banks. But when it comes to the current problems that we're seeing on the global scale with this conflict that has developed, there's really no material impact to the American bank's profitability. The banks that would have exposure, of course, are our global banks, including Citigroup, JP Morgan, then the custody banks, such as Bank of New York and State Street. But overall, I, I would say that there is some risk, no doubt about it. Uh, but right now, it, it seems contained. And again, the system is very strong based upon what happened from the financial crisis and should weather this storm uh, much, much better than they did during the financial crisis. I mean, as you mentioned, Gerard, the exposure to the U.S. banks might not be that substantial, but uh, would you expect just the challenges here to maybe convince the banks that do have exposure, like, for example, Citigroup, 
to pare back on their exposure by perhaps uh, cutting, cutting, cutting these arms of their businesses off? I mean, we already know Citigroup has been trying to slim down when it comes to their international presence, but might this accelerate that? No, that's a good question, because when you look at what Citi is doing, they are exiting out of certain international consumer businesses, but their global corporate and institutional business is their strength. And that's where the exposure primarily is to Russia. So I don't see them accelerating or cutting off that business as a result of this uh, conflict. Now, granted, they have taken precautions and, and they're also putting up probably some extra capital levels for safety reasons. But generally speaking, I don't expect a, a real knee jerk reaction. Now, maybe six months from now, they decide to exit the business. That's always a possibility. But right now, I would be surprised if that happens at this time. Now, some of the foreign banks certainly have much greater exposure to Russia than the Americans. The Americans generally don't have that much exposure. So there is some second derivative risks that if one of the big foreign banks that may have much greater exposure has more direct exposure to some of the American banks, well, then that would certainly be something to, to for us to monitor. But the direct risks to Russia right now are very limited for the American banks. And then lastly here, I mean, I can't believe the Fed is a final question in this case, but in this news cycle it is. But uh, what would you expect to see as the impact of the Fed's uh, kind of reaction through the March and the meetings later this spring and in the summer to the bank stocks? Because it's not as binary as higher interest rates hurt the banks. I mean, in some cases, higher interest rates could give the banks a little bit more room when it comes to uh, their net interest income. So uh, how important would, uh, let's say, for example, a more aggressive stance from the Fed over the course of 2022 be to the story for the bank stocks? It would be even better. You know, the real risk is that the Fed doesn't move at all. So what if the Fed becomes very dovish because of this conflict and they don't raise short-term interest rates or scale it back? That would be more uh, negative for the banks than being over or being more aggressive. The bank's uh, balance sheets are positioned to benefit mightily from rising short-term interest rates. You look at Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo is showing that a 100 basis point move in interest rates, both at the short end of the curve and the long end of the curve, a so-called simultaneous increase, which is highly unusual, but that's the measure the banks generally use. But when you look at that, that would lead to a 20% increase in revenues over 12 months for Wells Fargo. And so to us, the, the banks are positioned very effectively to benefit from rising short-term interest rates. It's one of the few sectors that will do so well in a rising short-term interest rate environment. All right. Well, in the next round of bank earnings, we'll be sure to have you back on. I believe that's going to be in mm -hmm. April. But Gerard Cassidy, RBC Capital Markets Managing Director and Head of U.S. Bank Equity Strategy. Thanks so much.